Morning, Kevin. Uh, how did the deal come together, and why was Pierre Luc Dubois the centerpiece in your return? Well, you know, the deal is is uh, certainly something that, uh, again, I think we've had lots of conversations uh, throughout the course of time. Um, uh, probably even dating, you know, back to the draft, uh, Yarmo and I talked about, uh, you know, different opportunities at that point in time of what uh, what we might do and what they might do. But uh, it came, um, you know, it came obviously. Uh, um, started probably in training camp and, and uh, um, you know, culminated ob obviously with some talks heating up over the past 24, 48 hours. Um, for us, obviously, we're extremely excited at Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know, coming in here and, and uh, um, you know, the, the depth and the size that we have down the middle here right now, I think that's, uh, you know, going to be the strength of our organization. I think if you, you know, teams that are going to be scouting us, um, you know, coming uh, into their, into the games, they're going to, you know, look at our depth on wing with, uh, you know, players like uh, Kyle Connor, Nick Ehlers, uh, uh, and, and Wheeler. And, and uh, you know, if, if Paul chooses to, to move Stas to the wing, obviously he'll be a dynamic, uh, you know, player there. Um, but again, uh, those are the combinations that, you know, having the two type of centermen that we do now and, and even three, if you want to call Stas, having that ability, the, the depth, uh, you know, down the middle is just something that uh, winning organizations, when you look back um, over, you know, those type of things, um, that, that seems to be a common thread. Go next to uh, Ted Wyman. Go ahead, Ted. Kevin, this obviously isn't the first time that you've been looking at, at making a move like this. Can you take us through why you felt it was necessary to trade Patrick? Well, again, I think uh, it's, it's never an easy decision um, when uh, you, you come into these type of discussions. But in this league, to make a trade of that magnitude, it involves, um, you know, that uh, uh, trading those kind of players. And um, there's there's probably a lot of different circumstances that come into play. You know, certainly we, we live in a, in a cap world. Um, you know, there's, there's always, you know, the, the projections of where things, uh, you know, uh, you know, may or may not go. Um, but to get a top center in this environment um, is, is virtually unheard of. And, and that's why, you know, the bidding was, uh, was fast and furious. I'm sure there's lots of teams that, uh, um, you know, were in on this, uh, just judging by the, uh, you know, conversations that, you know, we've, we've heard were out there um, with respect to the different teams interests. So, um, Getting a, a player that's that, that's coming into his prime um, down the middle um, is is uh, is something that uh, is just you know we wouldn't have done we wouldn't have moved a Patrick Line a, uh, for anyone you know that uh, that didn't fit that certain criteria of, of a top centerman or or a, a top defenseman and um, when that uh, when that opportunity presented itself I felt it was necessary that we made that move. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Gregor. Thanks, Kevin, for doing this. Um, yep. it's, it's always a, a, a fool's game to try and evaluate a trade hours after it's made, let alone even days or weeks. But is, is this one going to be maybe especially dicey in that sense because you've got two players that, I guess in Patrick's case, he's two years from UFA status. Pierre-Luc is three years and, and I guess, Kevin, how does that factor into the risk that um, that both you and Yarmo are maybe absorbing here uh, or have there or is there some optimism that that this could end up being a long term relationship beyond uh, just a few seasons? Well, certainly, you know, we're looking you know, forward to to getting him in here, getting him acclimated and, and uh, being a part of our organization. And, and we're you know, obviously hopeful that it's a, it's a long, long term relationship. Um, but again, the climate in, in the National Hockey League has changed somewhat. Um, you know, you look at uh, the deals that were signed, you know, three, four five years ago, they were all extremely long term. Um, but, you know, the way the cap has evolved and the, and the way contracts have evolved, um, the, the guys coming out of uh, entry level deals are essentially looking at signing, you know, the, the shorter terms and uh, trying to get the free agency quicker. So um, it's a little bit of a different phenomenon that that, that had shifted over the course of, of last summer. That's why we were extremely ecstatic when we got, uh, you know, the term that we did on Kyle Connor and, um, and obviously the term that we have on Nikolai Ehlers. Um, th those are the type of situations where, um, that, you know, th that's very, very important uh, for an organization to create that stability. So, um, again, every every situation is going to be different. You know, you're always going to, you know, look back at, uh, at, at certainly at trades. Um, but, you know, for us, it's about looking forward here. And I think that, um, you know, again, you know, the group that we're assembling here is, is something that, 
um, you know, we're excited about. I think if you look at, at Pierre Luc's, uh, um, you know, analytics, you look at how he drives plays through the, you know, the middle of the ice, and you look at his performance in the playoffs. Like those are enticing things. He's he he, he seems to rise to the bigger games, um, you know, in, in that regard. And um, you know, he he's he's looking for that opportunity to, uh, you know, to play in, in a market that uh, you know is crazy about hockey, and that um, you know he he's kind of a hockey nut himself, and and. So that uh, all these things factor in, but you know, again, we're we're hopeful that it's a, a long-term relationship. But like any player in this game, um, you know, there's uh, the, the future still lies ahead. Next to uh, Scott Billick, go ahead, Scott. Uh, good morning, uh, Kevin. Uh, just wondering, uh, can you provide any insight into um, providing insight into you know, what led to this? Because I imagine you know the first thought as a general manager wouldn't be to trade, uh, you know, a, a potential generational scoring talent like Liney, um, but, but it's obviously come to this. So, so what, what, what led to this? Can you, can you now kind of talk a little bit about how it got to this point? Well, I think there's a lot of different uh, things that, you know, come into any type of a situation, uh, whether it's negotiations or whether it's uh, when you, you know, ultimately make a decision to, uh, to make a trade. And, and um, you know, we've had lots of conversations, uh, his representatives and ourselves about, uh, you know, the different opportunities that maybe, uh, you know, have been afforded to him. It's, it's a difficult thing when a player comes into the league at 18 years old, um, you know, there's, you know, there, there's certain things that are, are, you know, afforded to them, um, you know, as a young player coming in and, um, they, everyone just thinks that there's that natural progression that, um, you know, offensive output or, um, you know, playing with certain people or doing certain things is, is the, you know, the, just a kind of a, a given as, as it moves forward here. But I think it all comes down to, you know, the opportunities. We, we tried a lot of different things, um, you know, with respect to, um, you know, like last year, obviously, I think, uh, you know, Mark and, and, uh, and Patty played together most of the year. And, you know, if you look at the analytics, uh, you know, it just really wasn't working. And um, so it, it really just comes down to finding, you know, finding that right fit and, and um, you know, uh, finding an opportunity, I guess, uh, you know, like I say, you wouldn't make this trade or I wouldn't make this trade if it wasn't um, something that, uh, you know, I felt was going to help our team to get better. And, um, you know, trading a player like Patty and, 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 you know, he's a, he's a great person. Um, he has, uh, you know, special abilities. Um, you know, it's tough, but, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois, is a, you know, is a big, hard, you know, two-way centerman that, uh, you know, the, that, that makes other people around him better. And uh, that's an important factor if you're trying to win. And uh, that's what we're trying to do here. We'll go next to Brian Munz from TSN 1290. Go ahead, Munzee. Kevin, you kind of just touched on it right there, but, uh, you know, we all understand it's a business, but from when Patrick joined the organization to where it is today, can you kind of take us behind the scenes a little bit as to how hard it was when you finally said, okay, we'll make the deal that a player like Patrick is leaving the organization? Well, you know, again, we're, we're, I think we need to focus on the player that we're also getting here, like the Patrick and, and, and Pierre Luke were drafted you know, number two and number three in the same draft. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's an opportunity, again, that, that we feel there's a better fit right now, you know, on a, on a positional standpoint, um, you know, within our organization, given the, you know, the elite wingers that we do have in our organization and, uh, and, and obviously even a, a, another elite, uh, you know, forward coming in Cole Perfetti. So, um, you know, over the course of time, you know, we were fortunate we won the lottery that year. We were a team that was, uh, um, you know, building and growing. Um, but we were a team that wasn't necessarily, you know, in the point of, of tearing things apart and, and, um, and, and rebuilding. So there was a lot of, uh, again, competition uh, within our group, um, you know, for ice time. And, and we had, again, good young wingers all trying to, you know, come up at the same time. Um, and, uh, again, I think the opportunity that, uh, you know, was given and, 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 uh, was desired. Um, I think that's probably what led, you know, to the, you know, uh, you know, Patty's uh, representative saying that, uh, you know, the, it was going to be best if, if maybe for both sides, if there was a change of scenery. So, um, again, that doesn't necessarily mean those things, uh, you know, happen, but when you, again, you get the opportunity to, um, acquire a positional, you know, need for now and the future um you, you know you have to you have to make those tough decisions uh and again with the uh with the strength of the contracts that we have with our with our wingers it just um um it it fell into place and and uh, i needed to make this move 
We'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Kevin. Um, if you want to talk with someone in the organization about Pierre-Luc Dubois and get a sense of him, I guess you've got his dad working with the Manitoba Moose. Um, what have you learned uh, from Pierre-Luc Dubois about, through his dad and, and uh, how may that have colored this situation? So really, honestly, we, we, we never clouded the issue at all. Um, you know, for, for me, it's, uh, this is about, um, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois' play on the ice, um, you know, and, and uh, certainly we, we know, we know, we know what the type of person it is because of, you know, the, the family that, that brought him up and, and they, you know, th that was never a question. So again, uh, you certainly have inside information when it, when it comes to that, but as far as, you know, putting, you know, his, uh, his parents, uh, his, his dad in a, in a difficult situation, we, we, we really never went down that path at all. Um, to me, the two things are separate and, and my, you know, much like the, uh, you know, the Adam Lowry, Dave Lowry situation, but, but that being said, um, you know, I think it's a, a special moment uh, for their family when uh, the opportunity to see, um, you know, their son play, it's kind of like, uh, you know, coming home and, and uh, hopefully this will be like a, a second home, uh, home market for, uh, for him, uh, you know, moving forward here. So um, I'm sure he's, he's excited about that opportunity to be close to family, but I think he's probably more excited about being in a, in a, in a market where hockey is, you know, uh, first and foremost, and and, uh, and and the the opportunities that come with the group of players that we have here to uh, to, to play with some really good people and and, and try to uh, uh, try to win. We'll go next to Jason Bell from the Free Press. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for this. I actually almost lowered my hand because I think you kind of just answered my question. It was going to okay. it was going to allude to the fact that the other day. Um, I don't think it's any great secret around hockey that that Dubois he might have made a bit of a statement with his last shift in Columbus, and and I just wonder, you know, you've talked glowingly about him, but do you see this trade as a, a there there will be an attitude adjustment for for a guy like him who clearly wanted out of that situation? Well, again, I can't really speak to um, you know how, how things got to that point in Columbus. Um, it's uh, certainly, again, you, you, as an outsider, you think you know um, what's going on, but really you don't. And um, unless you're in those situations on a daily basis, and unless you're in that room, and unless you're part of, of that, that daily thing, whether you're a fan, whether you're a, a, a media person, or whether you're a, a general manager from another team, you, you truly don't know. You, you go on the knowledge of what you see um, on, on a course of, uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the, the highlights should be of, of, of what he did in the playoffs last year. I think those are the clips that, you know, if you really want to see Pierre-Luc Dubois, um, that's the clips that you should look at. The, the rest of it, you know, again, unfortunately, sometimes these things, you know, happen. Um, but uh, I, these, are, these are young players that, uh, you know, are, are in a very um, um, favorable, you know, kind of uh, industry. It's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a, a privilege to play in the National Hockey League. And, and it's, uh, uh, again, it's, it's an opportunity that, um, uh, you know, as you grow and as you, you know, learn uh, more about the league, you know, you, you appreciate more. But um, again, for me, you know, those are the highlights, uh, the, those playoff highlights are the ones that I'm, you know, that are etched in my mind. And, and uh, that's the true player. Just a few more. Uh, we'll go next to Paul Friesen from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks, Gregor. Uh, Kevin, from the celebration of drafting Patrick and the early success he had to trading him has to be seen, at least on some level, as a failure. How much of that failure do you and the organization take responsibility for? So again, I think that, um, you know, when you draft a player at that particular time, um, you know, you're looking to draft what you perceive is, uh, you know, uh, the, the best player that, um, you know, that is there. And, um, you know, I think that, again, I think we did that in, uh, with uh, everything that we had uh, at our knowledge at that point in time. Patty's going to go on to be, a, um, you know, a great player. Pierre-Luc Dubois is, is uh, you know, his numbers that he's put up over the course of time, um, you know, have proven that, uh, you know, he's on a trajectory of, of being a great player as well. 
um, you know, it, it does come down to fit and it does come down to opportunity. And, um, you know, maybe at, at, at draft positions or at draft times like that, you know, drafting for the best player um, in your minds that's available is maybe not the right thing to do all the time. But, um, you know, at, at that time, that's what uh, that we did. And, and, uh, and I think that both sides of fit uh, have, have um, been able to uh, acquire some things that they needed at that point in time in our juncture. Uh, Mark Shifley was, uh, you know, just still starting to come into his own. We had Brian Little, you know, in his prime, and uh, you know, the, unfortunately, the you know the depth in the uh, down the center of our organization uh, got challenged, and um, now there's an opportunity to uh, to fix that. Uh, I think that's what you see when trades do happen. Is that uh, it's not about you know the, the 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 glitz and the glamour of of draft day. Um, that's a snap shot in a period of time it, it's what fits for your organization and what opportunities are there um, you know to continue a relationship uh, moving forward so um, I choose to look forward here and, and uh, you know I think that this uh, makes our team better which is ultimately what um, you know what what we're trying to do here we'll go next to Kelly Moore from CJOB go ahead Kelly thanks very much Gregor uh, Chevy uh, just, a, I guess, a bit of a two-parter here. Uh, would it be accurate to paraphrase this trade as you have dealt for a player who you think you might have a better chance to get to uh, commit long-term than the two players you gave up? And uh, if you could just explain when you could start the wheels of motion to trying to get a long-term agreement with the player you've just acquired in Pierre-Luc Dubois. Well, contractually, he just signed a two-year deal, so you you can't um, you can't enter into negotiations for an, uh, a longer term or any type of term deal until the player is in his uh, final year of the current contract. So, um, you know, the, the, f from that aspect of things, that process can't even start, you know, for uh, for a year. Um, but you know, as far as uh, again, you know, the fir the first part of your question, obviously, I think that um, you know, for for us, it's. Um, actually ask your first part again. <laughs> Sorry, can you ask your first part again? Sorry, just searching for Kelly here. I think we may have lost Kelly. Oh, uh, sorry. We'll go next to Jeff Hamilton from the side. I've had a go few ahead, things Jeff. on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin. Um, speaking on the topic of opportunity, just when you look back at Patrick Liney's time here in Winnipeg, how would you assess his treatment, uh, you know, as far as opportunity and, and whether you felt he got the best opportunity to be the best player he could be? Well, I think that, uh, you know, again, when you come in here as an 18 year old, um, you know, you're, you're treated a little bit uh, differently. You're, you're, um, you know, you're kind of forgiven um, for a lot of the different things that, uh, um, you know, go into your game, learning how to be a pro, learning, learning the pro side of the game. Uh, and he came in here and I think that we put him in, in a real good position to be supported and uh, to be, um, you know, surrounded by, you know, good solid players that, that, that gave him an opportunity to showcase his talents. And, and I think that, that he did, I think as it moved forward, um, you know, certainly he, he had increasing opportunity to continue, you know, in that regard, um, as you get to be more of a pro, I think that, uh, and more into your tenure, um, I think, you know, you want greater opportunity to, to, to be, um, you know, with, you know, certain, in certain situations and play a certain amount of uh, time and, and uh, you know, kind of, you know, used a certain way. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's important that everyone understands that there's 20 some players on a team that, uh, that are all, you know, vying for that same oxygen, uh, you know, on that ice and in that, uh, in that space. And, um, you know, we, we obviously moved, you know, him around, moved other guys around. I think we, 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 we gave a real good opportunity um, last year for uh, Patty and, and Mark uh, to play together. And I, and as I mentioned before, I think if you do look back at the analytics, it just, it, it really didn't produce, um, you know, the, um, you know, the, the results that kind of were desired by, by everybody. So um, I think that there's, you know, lots of things that, um, you know, uh, you know, have been done, but I, I think now, you know, given the, you know, the, the dyna dynamic, uh, um, makeup of our center position, I think that the opportunities for our wingers now are, are going to be, you know, fantastic having, uh, you know, two different style of players, um, you know, both very skilled uh, and, and uh, uh, the opportunities and, and, and the um, combinations that we can have moving forward here, I think are, are, are you know, great. 
Go next to Guillaume Lefrancois from Lepres. Go ahead, Guillaume. Hi, Kevin. Uh, I want to take you back a little bit to the 2016 draft. I'm sure you did your, your due diligence on, on Pierre-Luc uh, back then. I, I was just curious if that at all uh, played uh, in that trade, if there's any info left from there that you kept and, and that whether or not it helped you assess the, the type of, of character maybe that, the, that Pierre-Luc has. Yeah, so, you know, at that point in time, obviously, we were... Um you're doing your due diligence on, on a lot of those players and a lot of those kids. And, uh, you know, we've, we, we really liked what we saw when, when Pierre Luke was playing junior that year, he played a lot of wing, he played a lot of center. He was just really starting to come into his own. Uh, they moved him, I think partway through the year from wing to center and, uh, you know, really started to flourish there. And I think that, uh, you know, the following year, he, he even flourished, flourished more, you know, after that. And, and it became, became very clear that that move from, from wing, um, you know, at the time, uh, two center was, was going to, you know, work out well for him and, and, uh, he was going to be able to, uh, to grow into that position. So, um, I think having that flexibility in his game, um, you know, shows, you know, tremendous hockey sense and, um, you know, uh, obviously again, I go back to, uh, you know, his performance, in, you know, over those years in, in junior was great. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the due diligence that we did back then, um, you know, certainly you, you go back over, you know, those notes, but I think it's, it's, you know, the, the body of work of what he's done since he's been a pro, um, is, is something that, uh, you know, weighs more heavily into, uh, your decision to, 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 to make this, uh, move. Go next to Sarah Lesky from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, Kevin. Just wondering how soon you're hoping to be able to get uh, Sarah to fly into the city. Sorry, Sarah. I'm going to ask. I'm going to get them to turn the volume up yep. here. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Ask again. Sorry. I don't know if you can hear me better now. Okay. Just how soon are you hoping to get him into the city and begin the quarantine? So you can get him at the end of the team. I think you asked how I'm getting him to the city and, and the quarantine situation. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, uh, we're looking at getting a, a private flight um, as soon as we can for, for Pierre Luke to, to get in here. Um, you know, the quarantine situation, you know, is, is going to be real and, and um, we're going to, we're looking into it. I know that as a group of Canadian teams, um, you know, we're, we're looking to see if, if that exemption, um, that was there in training camp, the modified quarantine, uh, you know, uh, can be uh, applied for again um, in the uh, regular season. So that's something that we're hopeful, um, you know, can can take place. But uh, there's definitely going to be a quarantine situation that that we're going to have to deal with here. And, and um, you know, the sooner we we get him into Winnipeg, um, you know, the, the, the sooner that process will start.